Hi, this video will show you how a competitive industry determines the optimal prices and quantities in this market. So you're given a graph and your job is to figure out, hey, where's the optimal price? What's the optimal quantity? Let's provide an example. So suppose that the shoe market is a competitive market. And if you could choose the optimal prices and quantities of shoes, where would you want to be? And there are four different options here on the graph. We have different prices and quantities that correspond to these different intersections points of the cost curves, MC, ATC, ABC, and demand. And the question is, hey, where's the best point to be? Where would you like to be if you could choose any of these points? And if you chose, we thought, hey, A is the best point to be. Well, the problem with A is that price is actually too low. Because at point A, you make Q0 shoes, but look, at point A, how many people want to buy your shoe at P0? Well, you got to go over to you, to you hit the demand curve right here. This many people want to buy your shoe, and you only produce this amount. So that's a shoe shortage. No good there. Maybe you said point B is the best point to be. Well, point B... Yes, the firm breaks even there because price and average total costs are the same. But once again, point B suffers the same criticism as point A because you've got this many people who want to buy shoes, but you only made Q1 shoes produced. So once again, another shortage. So maybe you said point C or point D. Both of those points eliminate the shoe shortage. So well done. You no longer have a shoe shortage on your hand. But which one of these is better? Because one is the correct answer and one is not. So let's zoom in on this portion of the graph here between point C and point D. And that's where we have this slide. So C and D have been replicated here. And let's talk about which one of these options is the best. First, consider point D. At point D, when you make your 110th pair of shoes, yes, you're making 10 more pairs of shoes than point C, but that doesn't tell us why we like it more or less. At point D, where you make your 110th pair of shoes, what's the additional cost to make that 110th pair of shoes? Well, to find that, you've got to go from here, 110, up to the marginal cost curve right here. So the cost to make that 110th pair of shoes is $70. Now, what's the benefit, the marginal benefit we get from that 110th pair of shoes? Well, that's what simply someone's willing to pay you for the item. And that's right here at 30. So for the 110th pair of shoes, they're willing to pay you $30, yet it costs you 70 to make it. So that is a cost that is $40 higher then your marginal benefit. So we don't think 110 pairs of shoes is the optimal because of this gap between what it costs to make that 110th pair and what somebody is willing to pay for it. Okay? This is inefficient. You produce too many shoes. So maybe point C is the optimal. Well, for point C to be the optimal, what must happen is the marginal cost of making the item has got to equal the marginal benefit of the item being produced. What's the marginal cost of making the 110th pair, 100th pair of shoes? It's $50. Because that's where the, this hits the MC line. $50. Now, what's the marginal benefit from making that 100th pair of shoes? Well, someone's willing to pay you $50. So, 50 is the marginal cost. 50 is the marginal benefit, so 100 is the optimal output to produce at a price of 50. Note this is where the marginal cost and demand curve intersect. So that's the optimal bundle. That's the optimal price where MC and the demand curve intersect. That tells us $50 is the marginal cost to make that 100th pair. And 50 is the marginal benefit, what someone's willing to pay for that 100th pair. That's what's efficient. That's the best use of society's scarce resources.